Um, so step one, you're going to want to measure your, your plushie, okay, whichever plushie you're going to use. And you're going to draw a coffin shape around your plushie on a um, poster board that you're, that is different from what you'll be making your coffin out of. So I'm making like a stencil or whatever. Um, and you're also going to want to at this time measure how tall your coffin should be. So I decided that mine would be about three inches. And as you can see, I wrote it right here so that when I cut it out, I will always remember that this coffin will be about three inches tall. Okay, guys, so I also forgot to mention that you want to make sure that your um, shape is wide enough to leave some room around the edges um, just so that your plushie can fit more comfortably and it's not too snug, okay? Okay, so this is going to be the time where you want to go ahead and plug up your hot glue gun. And while your hot glue gun is getting ready, you want to take your stencil and we will be making the top of your casket or your coffin whatever you want to call it <laughs> okay so, um, it's gonna look like this and I forgot to mention so this is only going to be a part of the top you're gonna need this piece as well as a piece that looks just like this without the tabs okay so each top and I say each because I'm making three of these but the top is going to consist of this glued underneath the one with the tabs. And um, after I cut this out, the example is going to look a lot better. So I labeled them. So the one that has the little tabs will be number two. And the one that doesn't will be number one. You'll slip number one into number two and hot glue it or regular glue it depending on you. Don't glue down the tabs, okay? Now this lid is not going to be a box lid, it's going to be a hinge lid, meaning um, I'm gonna put hinges on it, okay? What's happening is I'm going to add a silk inside to my coffin, which you will see later. And then after the silk is glued in, then I will fold over the tabs so that it can nice, lay nice and flat on top of the box, all right? Um, so let's stop here for next step will be to measure how long you want it your box to be okay so I wanted mine to be three inches um, you know big or whatever so you want to go ahead and make flaps on each side so you notice how I did it here I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done but you want to go ahead and do that on all sides of your box so this is what mine looks like if you can see it looks like when you get boxes that you have to assemble yourself basically like I said you want to do it on all sides you want to make sure it's straight on all sides you also want to add tabs to certain parts of it so that when you pull them up together you can glue these tabs into the other ones um, and you'll see what I mean when I actually have this cut out right so after this you do want to go ahead and cut it out and <laughs> um, I do have to do this like two more times so be a little patient with me okay <laughs> so you've cut out your box next you want to bend um, or fold it where the creases are so um, the way you want to do this is you want to take your ruler it's kind of hard to <laughs> To do this with my with one hand but you want to take your ruler and press down because um i say this because the car the uh poster board is gonna it'll be hard to do this without a ruler but you want to press down and then just fold it over the ruler until you get a nice crease and you want to do it this at all creases including where your little tabs are okay and then it'll, it's gonna look like this all right so we're almost to the fun part because yeah we're almost to the fun part but it's gonna look like this um you want to have your hot glue gun ready don't hold it the way i just held it and you see your tabs you're going to put the glue on the outside of the tab and then you're going to close it um 
because I'm using one hand. You want to close it with the tab on the inside, just like that, okay? And hold it down, press it, whatever, to get it to stay firmly, okay? Okay, so we are done with this part. You have your top that is reinforced um, with the inside being the one without the tabs and then the outside being with the tabs, okay? And then you have your box here, tabs glued on the inside, not the outside, okay? And we are about to move on to the fun part. Okay, so we're outside. I laid down my plastic. Everything is faced to the back because the insides don't really need to be spray painted really that much. Maybe I'm gonna come in and do like some perimeter painting for the inside, but this is the paint I'm gonna be using. And I'm wearing my apron, all right, because spray paint can get places. We're gonna see how this goes because it might get a little windy and this, <laughs> none of this stuff has weight. So let's see. All right, so let me just tell y'all something. That last video, my can was defective. So I'm, I'm really hungry, so I'm eating right now. But let me just tell you, so because my can was defective and because I'm hikey like broke, I'm not going to the store. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to hand paint all of these. So after I eat, I'm gonna hand paint all the boxes. Kidoki, so they are drying kinda. I don't think I need another coat of paint. If I'm not probably just gonna spot paint from this point if any spot needs paint, but at this point it should be dry fairly soon. And then when the laundry is done, we will get on to the other fun part, okay? Okay, so voila. <laughs> Um, I went ahead and did one so that, one so I could um, make mistakes, but also so I can show you what it looks like before I break down how I did this with another one. But so with the lid, you can see I fold it down the flaps that I told you to leave out. It looks a little better. And I'm gonna take this little guy out see how it looks on the inside it's certainly not perfect it's also like buckling a lot which um, I feel like if I were to do this again I would reinforce the box more like do a second layer and then glue it and then fold it together you know just so it can be more like reinforced but I mean, but I think it looks pretty damn good. I will need to um, add the, uh, what's it called? Add the, um, there's going to be hinges on this side, and then I'm going to add a little clasp on this side. That way it can be more like forced close. Slick because it's so buckly, I, I might put class on the top and bottom too, just so that um, it can stay closed a bit more like solidly, if that makes sense. Hi, okay, so I showed you what the finished product will look like. Now I'm gonna take you through me gluing in the fabric, fluffing it, and of course making it into um, you know, a coffin. <laughs> I still have to get the um, class. I'm hoping to get those tomorrow and then I'll film me putting them on. Blah, blah, blah. And, and then it'll basically be done at that point. But you will need your box, your lid, and your fabric. I am using silk. You do not need to use silk. You use really any fabric you want. Your coffin is, I mean, at this point, you're making your own coffin, so it can be, it can look, be however you want it to look. Um, also, 
what I did is I basically went to a thrift store and got a um, silk top and I really like this one. <laughs> I actually did the, um, the other two coffins but I went ahead and did them so I could mess up and those um, I saved this shirt for last simply because it has this nice pretty pattern on it if you can see and I really just didn't want to F it up so I decided to do those first so I can get a good technique and then do this one last okay so the first thing you want to do is um, cut your cloth I would cut it very strategically right so me personally I'm gonna cut at the arms and cut the sleeves off and ideally the arms would be used for the smaller for the sides while I'm gonna use like the actual torso of the shirt for the larger pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and cut and then I'll come back and tell you about what we're gonna do next okay <laughs> So, as you can see, so this is the first sleeve, this is the second sleeve, and then this is um, one. This is the part of the shirt that was on like one of the chest parts. So this is the rest of the shirt. So you can see that I really um, didn't have to cut the whole. Like I didn't cut up the whole thing. I wasn't gonna just cut recklessly. One sleeve is gone. The back of the shirt is still intact and the other the sleeve and the um other side is gone so if i wanted to use this fabric again for something which i really do want to i have intact pieces i don't want to just cut recklessly um but it's up to you how you want to do it now at this point i'm going to prepare to get um parts for the larger parts of the coffin first right I want to glue those parts first so as you see I laid this on here so I can get a good idea of how big it needs to be and um, I'm gonna make a little cut here just so I can see that this it's this wide and of course I am making it a little bigger than the coffin itself because you never really know um, when you glue it you want to have room for the fluff and like I said you never really know if it's going you know how much you're doing. so I would say cut more than you need to and then at the top cut right here and that way if it does turn out to be a little bigger I can either tuck it when I glue or straight up just cut it off it's really no big deal um, let me do that really quick I'm trying to be really cautious about size because I don't want to run out of cloth. This is a relatively true to size piece of fabric for the inside of the coffin. And I'm doing the same thing over here with my, what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna lay it down like that and cut over. Say this again y'all be intentional be intentional about your cuts please do not 
I mean, do you? <laughs> do you, boo-boo? But I'm just saying, like, don't just cut willy-nilly and then be surprised if you run out of space or if you run out of cloth and things just look a little funky. Because if you do, that will happen. It looks a little funky. I've done it twice already. Hopefully, I'm... Because I, I, I did a couple techniques for the other two to find the best technique. Like I said, I really did not want to F up this, um, this fabric. So, yeah. I'll stop talking now. Okay. So, I will be gluing this one down first. And the technique for this is pretty much going to be consistent throughout. But I want to do this first because remember these little tabs? You fold these over. You're going to be folding these over. And so I just want to show you that first. But in terms of gluing down the fabric, it is about the same for every single part of this box. Okay? So here we go. I want to start at the bottom. When I glue, I'm actually going to fold it a little bit and press down okay let me um got my board i want to have this board out because i don't want to accidentally glue my carpet but yeah so what i'm going to do is glue along the edge Okay, I'm gonna put my hot glue. I'm not squeezing now, but just show you. I'm gonna boop, boop along the edge, not on the tab, right here. Not the tab, right here. So it'll go And then, while that very quickly before that glue, before that um, hardens, because you know hot glue gets hard really quick, I'm gonna do a little fold over and press down. And I will press it right on top, leaving the tab out so I can fold tab over when all sides are done, okay? So, is there anything else I want to say? Oh, before you put your hot glue down, go ahead and have an idea of your, like do a little pre-fold so you can have an idea. That way you're not fumbling with the fold too much because um, like I said, hot glue dries pretty quickly. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to do all edges. I'm going to leave one edge out so I can fluff it. Then I'm going to put fluff inside. I will come back and say talk as I'm fluffing and then I will fold over the sides and then the top will be done. Okay, so let's get started. Once it's 
closed, you'll see it's gonna look kinda nice, all right? So. Okay, it is done the top and I cannot wait to move on to the actual box as you can see of course This side is not that great, but every other side is pretty great. It looks pretty <laughs> I mean this is car. This is on poster board. So yeah, I think um, uh, Maybe I'll wait until the end of the video to talk about what I would do differently and um, if I ever do this again. But this is the how the top looks. It's the back, the front, I mean, the outside, inside. Tell me what you think in the comments. I'm going to take a little break and come back and we will be doing the inside of the coffin. The technique is very similar, but it will be right back. All right, I'm back and I'm ready to glue this in. So like I said, the technique is very much the same as with the top. You're going to maybe do a little pre-fold and then you're going to glue along the edges and just press down and do that on all sides. I will come back to speak as soon as the bottom is done, okay? So unfortunately, I have messed up this side. I was trying to cut it because it was a lot of excess cloth. Ended up cutting it very badly, but that's okay because I have an idea on how I'm gonna fix this. <laughs> so I'm gonna get into, go ahead and get into doing the sides. The sides are gonna be very simple. Like I said, I use the same folding technique to have a really clear, um, you know a really nice clean look so just follow along I'll try and like bring it closer but yeah you can see here I glued it down and I'm gonna I have an idea on how I'm gonna cover it up because I can't really fix it all right um, and if anybody at home is wondering why I can't fix this it's because it's paper I would literally have to build a whole new coffin just if I want to take this out because it's gonna rip the paper um, but yeah, let's continue and I will show you how I'm going to fix this. i 
Okay, so as you can see, I have glued down my sides and I made basically these little pockets. And as you can also already see, I went ahead and stuffed some of, well, all of the pockets with some um, fluff. They're gonna need more fluff, but this is just to get started because the next thing is um, pretty much gluing down the side. And so I'm gonna do a little demo before I actually start so you can see what I'm gonna do. So I will start with this side. Okay, you see this side right here? Once I have enough fluff inside of this, I'm going to take it and flip whatever remaining cloth on to the inside. And I do wanna tuck it behind my fluff the best I can. So whatever fluff is inside, tuck it behind it because you also don't want to glue your fluff. You don't want um, fluff on your glue gun. And then as it's folded, I'm going to add glue onto the inside and then just press it onto the glue and hold it. And you see it closes it up really nicely. I try to um, get this as, I'm gonna try and get this as fat as possible to cover this a little. And then what I'm probably going to do is um, make a little pillow <laughs> for this one. And if I like the pillow, I'm probably gonna add one at least to all of them. It's not hard to make a pillow. It's just gonna require me to do more work, but not that much work. But yeah, so that's what I'm about to do. I'm gonna add more fluff and start gluing it down. And then we'll be done, okay? Okay guys, I'm turning off my glue gun. It is done. Um, when I do like fully finish finish, there will be, you know, I'll, I'm gonna clean it up, but until tomorrow when I get the class, this uh, is the finished coffin. Um, well, somewhat finished. You can see the top looks how it looks, we already went over it. This is what the inside looks like. Um, it's not perfect. I do feel like it gets better and better every time I do it, and this cloth, oh, it, this is gorgeous. This is literally so gorgeous, and I am proud of myself. I do say so much, dark right there. Yeah, I am proud of myself. I decided I'm not gonna do anything about this part. I think it looks whatever, and I don't feel like making a pillow right now. But it looks damn good. It looks damn good. Um, let's see what Bones looks like. <laughs> hey, Bones. Oh my God. Look at him. Stop. I am just so impressed. 
but I'm gonna end it today guys I will see you tomorrow when we put the finishing touches onto the coffin you guys have a wonderful night bye hi um it's basically the next day so what we're doing is finishing up we're gonna make the hinges and the ties the clothes the coffins as well as just cleaning it up after that's done so i went to the store and i tried to find just some tiny cute you know decorative hinges at like a michael's or a joann's i didn't really have a lot of time or rather i didn't want to be out too long so i only went to joann's because i'll probably get some other stuff that will be relevant <laughs> for the next diy that i'm filming but I didn't see anything I liked and I was getting irritated and I wanted to go home. So I decided that what I would do instead was I'm going to make my own hinges. So you can't really tell because my work board has paint all over it. But I had some extra call, um, poster board and I made these, I made six of these thingies and I will explain what they are. So what I'm basically going to do is paint these gold and I'm going to slip these cute little red ribbons on the inside and fold them over and glue them into the box or on the outside of the box. They're going to be hinges. You'll see how they look but the first thing you want to do is cut out your hinge. So you want to figure out how long yours will be. I decided to do one and a half inches. Um, because ideally it will be folded over onto the side. So figure out how long you want them to be. And then, so in the inside, if you can see, can I, right, in, in the inside, I also made extra space for tabs on either side. They don't have to be that long. And I drew a line and folded them. Went ahead into the nice fold so that after we paint them and we're ready to glue in our ribbon they'll already be folded we won't have to worry about cracking the paint or anything so i hope that's very simple cut your hinge how long you want it to be measure i made sure the inside was big enough for the ribbon and then enough paper left to fold over so i'm going to come back and speak to you after these are painted and dry so that you can see me glue the ribbon in and then fold them over and then after that they will go right into the box okay so be right back Welcome back. So our hinges are nice and dry. Alright. This is what they look like. Make sure I painted the sides. Uh oh. Now my hot glue is ready. I'm going to be gluing the inside of these at this point. I'm going to glue down the ribbon in the center and then glue the sides down and press them down, like fold them in and press down, just like we did with certain parts of the box, okay? And then when that is done, I will be placing them on the hinges, so see you soon. Oh, 
Okay, so these are done. Next thing I'm doing, going to do is get ready to put them on the hinges. I'm mean, gonna put them on the hinges. So before we get into that, the first thing I wanna do is mark where each hinge is gonna go on each coffin, okay? So I'm gonna use a ruler. Okay, so we're back. I thought I pressed record, but then I started talking, but anyway, what we're doing now is I've marked each box to make sure I know where the head is gonna go on both the top and the like box or whatever. And now what we're going to do, I'm missing, I'm missing. Okay, got it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler. We want to find the very center of our hinge. You can see. And I like to use my ruler to bend it. Okay. It doesn't have to be bent like super perfectly. We just want a nice bend. So what we're going to do after we have that bend, I'm gonna see where it can go. Actually, I wanna um, you should have a little nail polish nearby. Go ahead right now before we start gluing. We're going to dab the edges of our ribbon and all of our pieces. This is this polish shouldn't make it too hard, but it should definitely seal up the um, the excess sprays if you have any. You know, if, if the hot glue is already done. Excess hinges. Wait, excess first. Alright. So I have this hinge bent. Let's go ahead and bend this one. Okay, great, great. Okay. And so, you're going to want to do this slowly. Glue the part that's going to be on the body first. And you want to simply stick it and pull. Now, if you want to do the top first, if that's easier, you can. I just didn't think to do that, but now I'm looking at it, and it probably would be, um, it would have been a good idea to do the top first. It's okay. I'll do that for the other two. But yeah. Either way, you want to do one part, whether it's the top or the body first, and hold. when it's all done, I will be cleaning it up, um, repainting certain areas if, it need, if I feel like it needs to be repainted. Um, but that's, I'm going to say it for the end. So now what we want to do is double check our hinge here. I'm going to have the tool on this side. That's why I was saying it might have been easier to do the top first, but it's okay. I'm just gonna do it a little bit here.
Okay, so the next thing we're doing is that I have my ribbons. I'm going to put two ribbons on the other side of the box, top and bottom, top and bottom, just how I did that. I'm going to try and glue them a little tucked in so it won't look too messy, and then that way it can be tied up, okay? If this is going to be very simple, just watch and see. All right. Okay, I'm back. I have cleaned them up. I've repainted them and I untied the ribbons so that you can see um, what they look like. So we'll just go through all three. This is the first, well, this is the first one in line. It looks like this on the sides. Cute little hinges. That's how it looks. The second one, open it up. So they're different because they are all for different people. So I have something special planned for each one. But as far as structure, they're all about the same. You see they look a lot darker too. I've repainted them with um, a more glossier paint. And this is, <laughs> I'm not sure which one will be my favorite when it's all done. Um, but this is how it looks, very pretty. As far as like what I would do differently, Obviously, I would use a more durable um, material for my box. If I had the money, they would be wooden. I have worked with wood before. I'm not gonna say I'm like an expert or I'm like great at it or whatever, but you know, wood or something harder. Um, I didn't work with cardboard for the simple fact that I didn't wanna deal with the ridges and cutting cardboard, and I saw I don't really have any cardboard, but poster board was nice. Uh, another thing I would do differently, hmm, use possibly, if, if I were using a more durable material, I would probably use like Gorilla Glue or something instead of um, hot glue. For the simple fact, hot glue is just, I knew it would bond well with the paper, but Overall, it's not really like a 100% durable type of um, adhesive, so I would use a, um, a better adhesive. But these are my boxes. They look so nice, they look so cute. Let me know what you think about these in the comments. Um, if you would like, follow me on Instagram, Art by Cupid. I will be putting my name um, or Instagram down in the description box below. Thank you guys so much. If you would do anything differently, also let me know in the comments i'm super like i'm actually really impressed about how this project turned out so bye